Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to part 24 of our tutorial series on Total War 3 Kingdom featuring Tal's Halt as we pick things back up in the spring season of 195 on turn 24. So last time uh, we ended with a little suspense here as Yuan Shao's first army led by Yan Liang has arrived and is going to challenge our city of Chen and we're doing everything we can to prepare for it including emergency administrators with the whole stack so that we can utilize the troops here for free actually and we're gonna set things up so that we can have a proper fight and a couple things we should do is even though I think we can try to grab a copy of the shaman item over because we'll be fighting Yan Liang's army we actually have a chance to capture but perhaps after we do the fighting down south in case there's a general waiting for us here. Let's see. Nope, it's empty. We'll be delegating this copper mine fight. And we'll be taking the decisive victory here. We should probably lose around, I'm guessing, 120 men. Oh, 44. Pleasant surprise. Must be a level 1. I mean, it definitely is a level 1, but not as much damage as we thought. And we're going to be shifting this army back. I decided to not attack the Han Empire territory because I don't think anyone's really going to attack them. And instead, we're going to turn our attention back to Xindu and maybe northern Jian, uh, Jian'an over here. I was thinking about keeping him alive and allowing him to expand. But there might be an issue where Sun Ce will expand before they expand. Therefore, it will become Sun Ce's land and we can never take it. Unless we go to war with the entirety of the Sun clan, which I rather not, uh, as we are currently trade partners. And the one piece of land in particular is this rice paddy, which can give us another 5% at the minimum in terms of faction wide replenishment, which is what I'm looking for. So I think we'll turn our army back. We will probably take this lumber yard, just because lumber yards are really easy to defend, and I can use this to choke them to make sure they can't retaliate and then turn around and take the other lumber yard and then walk here ourselves and pay 4,000 to colonize this so that we can have the rice paddy while keeping him here because then his army's attack route is either into a lumber yard which I can defend or into a copper mine which is now level 3 so the retinue becomes dramatically stronger right? instead of having only 4 units we now have 6 more for a total of actually 7 more for a total of 11 units which there's no way they can beat us with so many cavalry now versus we only having one cavalry from before. But I think that will be fine. Uh, so we're going to shift our army back this way. And then we're going to start switching items because we want to have increased capture chance on this side. Now, when you swap with two characters, it gets really weird. And let's say we take Sao Holdun's right now. We put it on him. That works just fine. But if we go to... Let's close this out. If we go to the next character and we want to remove and we pick Guo Jia, right? It doesn't let us because it's picking up the cooldown of the other item and it's messing this up too. So it actually goes entirely on cooldown, which means we kind of ruined that situation. So one item is basically on cooldown and the other item is still on Guo Jia as we can't use that trick. So you can't do it when there's multiple copies. You can't get it back either. So uh, we ended up not getting it at all, which is a bit of a shame, but he's not going to get entirely wrecked. So what I mean by that is even if we defend, he's not going to get wiped by us. So he's probably going to bounce back and land somewhere near us and we can chase next turn and then we can maybe uh, force a situation where we can capture them. So we're going to anticipate that and just remove this too so that we have both of them available next turn to hand out to a suitable candidate. And in the meantime, Dan Wei is probably going to get into a duel. So we're going to give him the bodyguard item which will increase Ooh, own retinue bonus. So no, 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 no. we're not doing that. We're going to instead just give him something real quick just so that this doesn't go on cooldown. And the character we want is actually Guo Si, who actually has a retinue. So he's going to take this. So the retinue gets the boost of melee evasion. 
I think we're good. This is useless on him, but useless on everyone else as well. We're just going to unequip. It's going to be a trade piece in the future. This army here, we have a satisfaction issue because of the high level or rank of Hua Xiong. We have a pretty low uh, satisfaction here, which is dangerous. Now we're going to first boost it back a little with the Clay Ox. Goes to 20, I think, at this point to prevent any possible turncoat situation. I'm going to splurge a little with a, just a regular one. Uh, in this second category here, Men of Merit, you have titles that are very simple. 100 for 15 satisfaction, which I think is good enough here. So his salary goes up to 250. He gets a very generic title, and he's pretty happy with us. Or we could have him basically take one of the more uh, general focused ones with some sort of bonus. Uh, but the problem here is he doesn't need bonus because he doesn't actually have an army. Yeah, so that's probably the most efficient way to boost his satisfaction back up. I don't want to get a faction-wide satisfaction debuff just because he's unsatisfied. And this army is also going to shift right behind. But instead of offering it up for them to attack, what we're going to do is we're going to ambush so they can't see it. And when they attack the city, they'll pop in as reinforcement so we get a couple more generals to help out. Uh, and every little bit of help we can get, we're going to try to get them. Over here, we're not upgrading. Taotian has finally taken the temple, which I'm now kind of interested in just because of his satisfaction issue. The temple will provide plus 10 points of satisfaction faction-wide. Uh, no income, no population. Uh, we didn't take it because of those factors before. And we're going to quickly pick a reform. And the one we want is this one right here, currency-based economy which will give us 10% commerce and also corruption reducing building on the state workshop. And we have it all set up to build these. We've been just waiting for that reform. So let's pop them in in Huainan and Chen. Eventually we want one here as well, but right now we don't have that. And down here, eventually we can get tier three, but this is an income focused one. So instead of going for corruption reduction and less income, we're going for high income and relying on our administrator to actually reduce corruption, which you see is growing quite fast. It's 9% here, but if we go to one that has absolutely no corruption reduction from administrator, you see that we have actually reached 13%. So our income is not going to grow as fast as we expand. We're pretty much over expanding already. And that's going to continue, which is why I might refrain from wiping him out and taking too much territory too quickly before we get adjacency corruption reduction online. And that's going to take a few more reforms as that's going to require the level four version of the state workshop, which I believe is right here. So two more reforms, but they're not on the way to the Onyx Dragon. So either we have to deviate a little bit and spend about 10 turns to get that, or we wait for it. But we might not be able to wait for it given how the corruption is growing quite rapidly already. So that is our main concern here. Buildings are done. Let's do a turncoat check. Our armies all have moved already. We're ready to have our final showdown fight. No new turncoats. And a quick diplomacy check. Yanbai who had enough. 12 points. Wow. We did take the copper mine. We could peace out. It's not impossible. The only thing I'm kind of not sure is this the weaponsmith and the livestock farm are not good defensive maps compared to copper mine which means if in the future they attack us in either place we can't really defend it with just a garrison whereas if i was able to take a lumber yard i can choke him with a lumber yard and a copper mine and make sure he can't beat either one with a full stack because of the way vision work and towers and such so I think we'll hold off until we capture at least this, if not more. We can't wait on those. This new option makes us a vassal to Liu Biao. But this also hints that we are meeting new factions because we have access to the Yangtze River and our trade deal, as you can see, the vision goes all the way to here because this is their capital. The road leads to a trade port, which leads in the river to our capital. This is why we moved our capital to access these new trade routes. Otherwise, would not be available for us. 
and we can quickly check here we have absolutely no deal with him which is kind of what i want we could throw him a food deal right now because i don't think we're going to war in the next 10 turns it's just not realistic for us to start that many wars and we can actually make quite a bit from him i'm guessing Oh, that's a very good guess. Uh, we can probably squeeze out a little bit extra, but seems like we hit the nail on the coffin here. 32. Okay, so that's not bad. Let's secure that. And then continue to do our check. Liu Chong is still good for two more turns. Eight more turns of payment here. We're at war with them. Nine more turns. We're still at war with Dong Min. Liu Biao. This is a new faction. So, we don't see them uh, on the map exactly where they are, but I feel like to prevent a possible war with him and his two vassals, we should engage in some sort of diplomacy. This is a new faction. He doesn't have any items. I could sell him an item as well. Let's see if he's receptive to food. He is. Let's see if he's particularly rich. He's decently rich. We can also sell him to food as well. And he'll probably offer us a little bit less, a little bit less than what the other offer was. Okay, more than a little bit less. Hmm, this makes me want to throw in this item that we're never really going to use. It's a very standard one. So instead we can probably get like 150. Oh, even more, okay. So we're at a pretty generous level. So I feel pretty good at adding that item in. Looking at how much more income we can get out of him. Alright, that's absolutely the max. And I'm pretty happy just to make a deal with him. We still have to worry about his vassals. The vassal can always request to start a war with us. With their master. And the master could grant it to them. And in this case, oh, he desperately needs food, 2.5. He's probably poor, right? He is poor. Maybe he has cash saved up. Usually AI factions will not spin and tend to hold on to quite a bit of cash. Now, it's not a lot, right? This is very little for one food, but I think given the situation, we just want to lock everyone up in deals so they don't think about going to war. Oh, 500 is the exact amount. Can you believe that? Okay. And then we're going to try to get a deal in with him as well. It looks like another 2.5. Hopefully he's uh, he's equally as poor, if not more so. Oh, he's, he's, he's even more poor. Um, please have an item that no one uses. That is not possible. So 500 is out of the question. He's way poorer than the other guy so hopefully we can land somewhere in the middle here i guess we'll just take that for the security of the deal and at this point we also have Zhu Rong, but he has tons of food and i wouldn't mind wiping him out so we're happy here we secured a bunch of deals uh, we have a building slot here but i don't want to upgrade so we're kind of capped uh, in terms of where we have things and someone mentioned about trading six food away for 200 income per turn is a bad deal it's not really and their rationale is the food trader building here where you sell food you get 220 so if you don't get more than this you shouldn't well that's not true because there's a few things one there's an actual cost of building this so you're investing multiple turns of income to get this payment so even our heavy discount of just the conversion cost if you look at the construction cost of these things conversion cost is a three turn flip right you wouldn't make any until the fourth turn then you're also giving up opportunity costs of farming food so you will give up three food to negative six so that's this nine food swing it's not a six food swing for 220 it's a nine food swing for increase of nine um 110 because the difference of 3 food plus 110 to minus 6 food and 220 is not a direct comparison. So you're paying 9 food for 110. So paying like 6 food for 200 plus with the security of not going to war with a faction is definitely worth it. And it's only a 10 turn deal so it's not permanent. 
uh, we do have a blade, which we did notice here. Eventually, the ideal person would be administrator. It would be here. Now, he has plus 9, which isn't terrible. We can also use it on someone who's in battle, but I don't think we have one of those characters. So he's going to pick this up just for the 2% increase of discounting here. I'm tempted to get rid of the horse because it's not actually increasing his population. And I feel like uh, it's missing 3 points, which is not enough because we can flip the horse and get 2 points. It would be a 99, probably still 19%. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we have some spare generals, maybe? Yuan Huan is a spare, and uh, Huang Longluo is also a spare, but they can't ambush on the turn they're summoned, so we're not... Oh, we can, we can put them out there, actually, but I think that's too much maneuvering. I think we're good to go. Let them come, and we can have this proper fight, which is the highlight of this episode, of course. So let's see what happens. Alright, the Yellow Turban Rebellions are temporarily destroyed. I say temporary because you can spawn new rebels and they can form back. They have taken the route of just sieging, which is rather strange. I think it's because they spent too many turns away from friendly territory to the point where they are suffering through attrition, as you can see. And they don't feel like they're strong enough to take us on. And as we challenge them into the siege menu, they break siege. Which is actually fine, it does stall the build, as in during the siege this will stay at 3 so we can never finish this building, which is rather annoying. But given that they're completely out of supplies, this army is just going to become weaker and weaker every turn, and it shouldn't be a threat, which is great news. Uh, we can focus on the south. Is there a worthwhile general? Nope, Bian Rang not really interested. We want to go attack the Lumberyard. Guo Jia is the only one who needs some healing. Okay, and this unit. But this unit is just missing a little bit of health. Everyone's here, just one unit's kind of injured. Um, we can't attack in March mode, but we can get close enough. Actually, let's just first walk and see what we see once we get here before we decide if we want to march or not. No one's there, so I'm assuming it's safe to march. Yeah, it's safe to march. I guess. Oh, oh, the counterattack is on. So they want to come take the level one livestock farm, which is very vulnerable, and we're going to lose it. This is one of those fights that no amount of magic can turn around. Well, actually, no, I don't think we can do it. We. If we get a strong enough general where we can duel her and kill her. Oh, well, she has tenacity of steel. That's tough. Then the morale shock will kill off these units. The archers and spearmen from the basic garrison. Actually, no, just too weak. We'll let them take it. We'll let them level it up for us. So when we retake it, it'll be level 2 or something. That'll be wonderful. Uh, that's why we don't want to leave things as is, because how vulnerable livestock farm is. Our rice garrison, very powerful, given that it is now a garrison building. Look how many units, and look how you get faction unique unit here. Uh, just ridiculous. These things are impossible to take, and we will be fine with that. Over here, I think we just stall. I mean, we can't really attack back unless I build out an army, and given how much I want to expand our economy right now, in terms of what buildings to build, get corruption under control, I'm not going to be spending cash on the second army. Okay, over here, we still have how many turns of the assignment? One turn. So this is another situation where we prefer to build something that's longer than one turn. So this two-turn build would be perfect. Yeah, let's build this. And we cancel, put him back in next turn. And things will work out just great. Over here, one more turn of build. Over here... We can't build this until we get ourselves a artisan. And we can get an artisan by getting a level 4 building. And the easiest one would be this. The artisan workshop requires a reform. Yeah, um, we'll get there. We probably want to invest a little bit deeper in the purple reforms. So that's going to be our, our goal next. So that we can get the final tier of the weapon craftsman or weaponsmith. And the difference between the three tiers is on tier one, you have 
a small chance of producing a unique or gold weapon. Tier 2, you get an increased chance, and Tier 3, you get a, you know, biggest chance you have. But the key here is there is a cooldown period between how fast you get each weapon. So on Tier 1, it's a weapon every 3 years, and it goes down to 2 years or 10 turns on Tier 2, and about 1 year per weapon spawn in terms of the maximum amount of cooldown. There's a chance to roll a new weapon every turn, but if you reach the max, you're guaranteed to get one. So for the frequency of how often you get stuff, you still want to get this to tier 3 as fast as you want, or as you can. And then we're going to upgrade this right now because we're missing an artisan as we turn our attention back here on the lumber yard. Um, I think that might be it. Just a quick check of turncoats. Nobody. A quick check of diplomacy. Always curious what the values change. So it's going in our favor. And I'm pretty sure next turn when we take one more territory, and actually they'll take one of ours as well, but uh, hopefully it'll swing even more in our favor. We have to retake it. Mm. It's a bummer, but we'll deal with it. These values are all going up as well. I am not interested in fighting Leo Bell anytime soon. Oh, I wish him you. live the longest life possible because I don't want Liu Bei to take over his land. He is wealthy, so we should be able... Okay, not that wealthy, but we should be able to land a pretty favorable deal. 195. There we go. All right, just off a non-aggression pack that I'm very interested in Ooh, signing. Yeah. He's all the way over here, by the way. So we're not going to get there anytime soon. Our next goal after swallowing up this region uh, and securing another rice paddy for about 10% faction-wide replenishment is to swing our armies north, take this trade port, get Guangling, wipe out Taotian, meet Liu Bei and Kongrong, wipe all of them out, and then have a proper war with Yuan Shao just like historical sense. We just detoured south a little bit uh, to make sure we have the economy and the replenishment for the future wars. We're pretty happy. Let them come again. I doubt they will actually trigger a fight, which is a bit disappointing, but let's continue. And the one that's going to actually want to fight us is the bandits. Uh, we have more men, but they have a level 4 general, so there's no way we win this. We can just try to inflict as much damage as we can, so let's give it a shot. It's an open field battle, so we're guaranteed to lose. Hmm. I still want to fight it. Let's slow them down. Alrighty, we got a rainy day here. It's a very familiar map. Livestock farms all look like this with very various amount of vegetations. Um, we can't do much. Uh, we can utilize the fact that you can see we can't deploy on cities, which might actually help protect our range unit. You can make sure no one can straight up charge them because they're right on a city. And then we can even have like spear units hiding in the forest. There we go, we're hiding now to catch the people off guard here. Now obviously we will need to sacrifice someone on this side. Oh, we can have a hidden charge unit and then just a flank protector. Alright, it's going to be on fast because we're not going to be able to do much. I just want to try to do as much damage as we can. Or we can hide this guy too. They're scouting for us, which is actually fair. Now here comes the general. This is going to be the person to ruin us. If we could kill her, I'm pretty sure we can destroy the rest. But I'm not sure if we have a suitable general right now who's available, given that everyone's defending Chen. Or else we can actually give this a shot. I'm going to dictate the fire myself. We want to target certain units. Oh my gosh, she has a bow. Okay, she can try to snipe our guys. I mean, she doesn't have much ammo. 10 shots, kill 10 people. Uh, even though it does way more damage, it can only kill one model per arrow, so it's not a big deal. Alright, seems like they're coming this way. We'll tilt this side. Get a first shot on the enemy archer militia. They're burning stuff. This is the raider trait. There we go. Come out. 
I want to cut them off. Nope. It, well, that's so slow how we tried to close that gap. I right, might as well show up. It will bounce back, I'm pretty sure. The morale should bounce back after the cavalry shock and enemy missile leaves it alone. Because they're both debuffing events. Oh my god. You see how hard it is for us to get the unit to brace to knock a general off the horse and how easy it is for the AI to do that, like almost instantly? Like, we're technically braced, right? And then she skillfully avoids us. Alright, we we bounce back, just get it to turn and get it a couple shot on the enemy units without shields. Alright, we can actually fight them. Hold on. I don't want to fight the axe, really. But if we fight them, the enemy archers will stop firing at us, which is a blessing here. Alright, we're getting routed. It's definitely over. We killed off both cavalry, which is a success. He will also bounce back. Nice. Grimish mode on will actually help us as we make a run for it. Alright, they bounced out. Mm. Unfortunate. I think we're all gonna route very soon. Go into the forest. Maybe we can jump them. There's a chance. There's a chance. Never say no. If they bounce back, we gotta hide them real quick. Keep moving. Keep moving. That one unit. She killed one unit and they routed entirely. Ridiculous. Alright. So you can charge them. That's my only goal now. As the general come hunt us. This is pretty much our own fate. We do this to the AI all the time. Charge our general into their unit. Now they get to do it to us. I just hope we can kill some archers before they rout us. Those vile archers. There we go. Kill them, kill them, kill them. Move, move, move. Kill the other one, kill the other one. Charge! Ah, uh, intercepting us. Charge! Charge! Ah, where's it? We're done. Alrighty, so they took it back, which is fine. Hopefully they can develop it. Everyone gets wiped at the end. I should have protected the archers a little better. We thought, or I thought I could close that gap from the enemy cavalry. Was not the case. Alright, we lost the territory. Yuan Shao's army retreated or ambushed? They're no longer here. Okay, that's not really our business. We have another son. Taohudan. Okay. We finished our mission. We can invoke new ones. There is some deteriorating of hmm, between Zamba and Xiaohui. They're not in the same army, but they are in the same commander right now. Since the enemy army is kinda gone, we're gonna go I'm gonna go here first. I don't wanna go too far in case they do show up again. Let's go here. It's safer here. And yeah, we're going to be in different commanderies, so they're not going to impact each other's, you know, opinions of each other. We got ourselves a black horse, which is great on strategists because it will boost their cunning. And we're going to give it to Guojia here. He definitely deserve one of these back. They're going to be stalled here for a little bit. They can't beat either one, so I'm not worried. Let's get this first in case the mission is to fight something. I should probably move him to Chancellor as well, but let's do this first. Another upgrade? Yeah, get creative. Build administrative office, which is not that great. Hmm. I don't like either one. You don't have to do them. That's the thing. You're not forced to do them. I'm gonna take the delegate just to save some time Ooh, we got Xu Chu. all right this is another recruitment event and another one of our awesome champion characters Xu Chu has joined us with a gold weapon he's a unique model so he gets his own armor Retinue upkeep discount. 32 armor is quite low, but he's known to go naked and fight people. So armor is not really his thing. Um, 
Very useful. This is the general we kind of needed to wipe out a general such as, you know, that sentinel over there. We'll take flexibility and then go for reach. You see that there's faction fondness. This is preset. Uh, he has a chance to spawn after battles. And in this case, we had a very nice battle. Therefore, he spawned. Yan Bai Hu has been spawned here. I could just try to wipe him out. Try to get his weapon as well. Try to get a capture on him. It's very risky to do it in the settlement though. It's better if he comes attack our settlement and we repel him. Oh, by the way. So this is a bandit building. You can't touch their mini building. It has nothing to do with you guys. Just convert the main building and then this will go away. Uh, bandits have a different building structure than the Han units. Three applies Haran's bonus. Over here, we are fine. They have disappeared. We're not upgrading that. That is finally progressing. That is almost done. That is almost done. We're going to take this chance to upgrade that. Well, actually, should we? Yeah, we should probably go for a small city. We lost some food because we lost the livestock farm, but good thing we have a good buffer here. I'm not going to go chase him. We're going to come down this path, take the lumberyard, and then take them. So we're going to go this way. Actually, we get 2% extra replenishment here. Our replenishment is high because of the 5% from the building faction-wide, uh, which means 20% right now, which is decently high. All right. All the buildings are done. Quick check of turncoats. We also have some new characters this turn, which I haven't taken a look at. Well, they're over here. Sun Qian, interesting. Wow, many new characters. She has the boost for industry exploitation. Kind of curious. I guess with this many characters, I kind of want to scan their items first. No item. Nope. 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 Okay, so we're talking about the merits of their skill tree and their traits and background if there's a unique one but from the first scan no unique background so brand officer see this grab them they are so good so we're gonna recruit her Dan Feng Jin. okay so that's a unique background 30 points here 6k population growth that's not bad we could grab him we do need a new strategist. We only have two. And that's it. Oh, this is a bandit character with poison volley ability. So this is very strong. This is what um, Yan Bai Hu was using our army. So we're grabbing her as well. So that's 3,000 out of our pocket to grab characters this turn. So this is because she's a bandit character with a very good active combat skill. This is because we need strategist and he is a semi-unique character. And then we're recruiting her because she's a burned officer. Alright, busy schedule and we're bleeding money left and right, which is fine. Uh, we need to put our burned officers somewhere to debuff enemies. And they need to be in the same county as the army. So this is our main defensive position. Therefore, we technically need her out here. So the awkward thing is she's going to have to sit inside, they're going to have to ambush outside. She's safer inside in this case, and the second army there can defend, uh, out, they can come in as reinforcements, and she can debuff the enemy ammo, right, because the burn buff would debuff enemy ammo. We have it on her and we also have it on Guo Jia. We can put the bandit character with her too, and that would be quite strong. They can probably be self-sufficient here. So they come with bandit retinues. We can't recruit these ourselves. So if you want to keep them for collection sake, you can, but they're pretty bad. So we're going to get rid of them as well. And then we can fill them up with one more character if we want. Shuchu doesn't like to work with them, so we're going to pass on that. Or else Shuchu will be perfect here. We could also 
set up the bandit here as well. Mm. It's tempting, but we're not gonna do that. I think this is important to defend. I don't know if I should pull him from the position right now and switch to someone else because um, he's not contributing to our economy. But I guess it's fine as long as there's someone here. Yeah, I guess it's fine. We'll just try to make money from combat. Alright, let's continue to... Actually, we didn't really do a diplomacy check. 25 points. So at this point, you can even ask for territories back. And I'm pretty sure it's likely they could give it to you. Okay, we could get one of them. We'll take one and then get one. At the end, because he's not going to have enough money to pay you, you know, reasonable amount here. But as we keep beating him down, right, so it'll be fine. I don't think we want to wipe him. All right, let's just continue for now. And he comes to us with a peace offer with cash right away. Just reject. All right, more war in the north. Oh, Liu Qi has his own faction. Interesting. Got granted independence by Liu Biao, his father. Our oldest son, Cao Hong, has come of age, so he's now actually available to use. There was a fear of assassins. We can pay a little bit of money to gain vigilance. Or we just do nothing and pay less money. Over here, the punishment's public order, which I don't want. This is just an act. I just pay. I don't really want the bonus against Spy, it's not worth the extra 200. So they're trying to assault a town which is suicidal and to make sure it's suicidal for them and I also want Shushu to come out and get some experience. I'm gonna pop Shushu in here and he's all we need here. Now I could try to capture her if she's a bandit character. Oh she has a good weapon. Incense ma Tax Collector is not a bandit background so that is not relevant for this battle here. I could steal one of them. I guess we steal one. Just You know you can always switch one. You can't switch the second one. And we'll give him some offense. And that's good enough. He will wipe out the general here for us. There's no one to capture here as Yuan Shao has ran away apparently. What a disappointment. Made us overreact with the administrator. I wonder if I pull him, would he immediately attack us? <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. Um, let's see, we have 4,000. We have new characters again. Oh my gosh. What is happening in the world? Why are so many characters joining the pool? Do a quick scan for, ooh, weapons. Silver weapons, always worth. So I think I just recruit him for the weapon and then we could fire him. We could also consider to fire some characters who we had earlier, who we no longer need. So weapons definitely coming with us. Uh, she was the wife of Liu Yao, we remember her. We wiped out that faction. Just taking a quick look at traits, because we did look at items already. No burned officer this time. Quicking, quick. She is also a bandit. Lookout is a bandit trait, I believe. We can double check outside, because sometimes there's a standard lookout as well. Oh, she's just standard, so we don't need to recruit her. There's no poison volley ability waiting for us. And we'll leave everyone else alone. No one really attractive. And over here in our court, uh, you do not have a purpose here. We'll give the spear to our son, who just come of age. Uh, I don't want to mess up the cooldown, so we're just going to... Get rid of it for now. Make sure he has no items. Fire him. Anyone else we might want to fire? Our son has a unique title, but not much else going for him. He's a free character because he's in the family. We could keep him. He does offer a unique set of skills. He's slightly younger. Also, bandits, kind of interesting. Huasium is pretty well known. I guess she's the big question mark. We can save the armor eventually for our other son, Cao Pi, who is going to come of age very soon, I believe. 
Well, never mind. Ten years away. Wow, that's a long time. And we have a couple more kids coming as well. Okay, Yu Jin leveled up. I guess we'll pick this up for the extra expertise. I do want this though. I guess we come here first. We'll get the same amount of expertise. Alright. I, I think we'll keep the administrator for a little bit. Not exactly a commandery we are looking to get anytime soon. We're gonna go grab this right here. We cannot reach. I could ambush. 26%. If they try to get back, we wipe them here and then we take this next turn. Quick scan. Alright, we captured it. We're going to upgrade it. We have enough cash left to build other things, hopefully. Let's build this first. I'm not in a rush here. Right, not in a rush at all. Okay, all right. Quick check of spies. Okay, we have one. We can't afford him. He's in Yan Bai Hu's faction. Not interested. And then how much deal? I think it's going to drop. Yeah, it's not 25 anymore. He had a turn to replenish, so he feels a little bit stronger. 2.1. Okay, that's fine. Let's just continue here. Alright, Yan Bao Hu is attacking her town. This is not like a livestock farm. They have no shot here. Let's go wipe them out. Alrighty, welcome to the beautiful town of Kuai Ji. As their main force is waiting for us on this side, our entire army is going to run away and Xu Chu is going to defend the rest of the town on the other side. Oh, we can squeeze them here at the gate. Perfect. Xu Chu is going to defend. Now, Xu Chu has some really funny stories which we will share. Um, let's first get things started. Run to the side. Xu Chu was a farmer boy, a pretty standard person. Uh, he eventually became really well known as Cao Cao's bodyguard. But before he was Cao Cao's bodyguard, he was in a regular town and they were attacked by bandits. So he organized defenses for the town and they fought the bandits and the reason why he would organize such defense didn't want to duel him he would organize such defense because he was a strong man so tough guy a uh, big strong dude and they fought the bandits for a long time until you know they decided to go negotiate with the bandits and we can speed this up and then they went to negotiate and he negotiated sort of a ceasefire with the bandits and the bandits was willing to let them go if they would give the bandits cows, right? So like a bull, a cow, not for meat. Cows is really valuable as a, a, you know, livestock animal for farming. So they asked for a cow and he went there to deliver the cow to the enemy bandits. And in the delivery, the cow got spooked and started to flee back towards the village. And then Xu Chu grabbed the cow with one hand and tugged the cow back towards the bandits to make good on the payment and when the bandits saw that he was this strong they just ran away and that's a really nice story of Xu Chu in the beginning of things uh, when he first started working with Cao Cao. We gotta pull them a little bit away from the town because they do have that raider trait which they just light things on fire which is a bit annoying because it was spread pretty quickly in towns like this. I'm gonna just have we can just have them sit here and if the enemy general come, we'll just whack them and... Oh, we can duel. Okay, we'll, we'll save that in our back pocket. We'll get a duel after we kill off all the regular troops. You see the fire? Really annoying. Took out two towers. But then Xu Chu eventually joins Hal Tal. And because of his strength and size, he's well known for that story uh, in his village. So Hal Tal used him as a bodyguard. Uh, the first person that was really Hal Tal's close bodyguard is Dian Wei, who we have. But Dian Wei eventually would die defending Hal Tal. You can think of Game of Thrones Hodor type of situation, except for Dan Wei's perfectly fine intellectually and uh, kind of held the gate uh, so Cao Cao could escape and eventually he died um, against the entire army. 
and that is uh, Dan Wei's story. And after Dan Wei's death, Xu Chu took over as the main bodyguard. And he was very good at his job. He was given the nickname of Tiger's uh, Fu, uh, Hu Chi. And uh, it's a demonstration of his strength and willingness to go duel Ma Chao while being naked. And that story obviously exists only in the Romance of the Three Kingdom, where he would like strip his armor away to fight Ma Chao in a duel that lasted day and night. In reality, what happened is Ma Chao was facing off against Cao Cao's army, and we can smash her with damage and take away her melee evasion, which we do right away, because then she has no melee evasion, we just kill her. Um, but Ma Chao was very talented and skilled, and during the negotiation that he planned with Cao Cao, so basically you have parlay situation where both general comes out and meet in the middle to talk. Ma Chao had planned to try to assassinate uh, Cao Cao here. Wow, why are we losing? Sentinels, really annoying. Oh wow. Oh wow, there goes Xu Chu. Okay, we still have the army here. That is very shocking. Alright, she's routing too. She had a silver weapon and tenacity of steel. That's impressive, but I thought we would win for sure. Hmm, strange. Well, they're still going to get wiped as they try to get to town. We're going to move our army back. Uh, but Xu Chu basically followed Cao Cao during that negotiation, and when Ma Chao saw Xu Chu, he basically decided not worth taking the chance in case Xu Chu stops him. And then, you know, the battle ends right there because he did still have a decent amount of men. Um, Ma Chao is actually pretty ahead in that war in the beginning. Uh, but that's another cool story about Xu Chu. Xu Chu was also very uh, keen on his role as a neutral party and Cao Cao as a bodyguard, as in some of Cao Cao's sons would sometime approach Xu Chu to chat with him, and every time Xu Chu would not talk to them. And many people thought it was rude, but Xu Chu's logic is, before Cao Cao picks out an heir, let's end battle, he didn't want to pick sides and get involved being Cao Cao's bodyguard. So he just avoided that conversation entirely and came off as rude against Cao Pi, but everyone respected Xu Chu enough to not punish him for it. All right, now I'm curious if we picked up a bad trait. Okay, there's that possibility, but since we won the battle, I think we avoid it, right? Even though we got killed in the fight, because we won the battle, we don't pick up a bad trait. I will pick up... I don't need replenishment, I just recall him and he'll be full healed. We'll take money. Alrighty, so... Huang Shao got wiped. Interesting. Wow, lots of war with uh, Yuan Shao. Ooh. This is because of his farmer background. We get a random event, Agricultural Master, which boosts income by 15 for peasantry. Very helpful. Oh, speaking of that, we should have shuffled characters a long time ago. He should be here. We're not really recruiting armies. So this is weird. They don't consider him beat in the duel, or else he would have been injured and on cooldown. Instead, he had like a sliver of health, which is super odd, um, but... I'm fine with that. They have no way of attacking us again. So what we're going to do is just recall him this turn so he comes back fully healed. Maybe not even here. No one fell for the ambush. Quick attack in the lumberyard and then we'll go pick up our livestock farm again. Hopefully they're still expanding down here. We're just going to delegate these fights. Right, quick and easy. What level is it? Level 1. Alright, we'll convert. We can't do anything to that building. Alright, we should be okay. He's not exactly full heal to come attack us. We can finally upgrade this. That finished. Oh, Kong Zhou took... The farmland from Heyi. I did not expect that. We don't have any active deal with them. Oh no, we do. We have a food deal. Okay, so I was thinking about turning on them to get that temple, but I guess not. A few more characters. 
no one really impressive we have to still check for items another farmer we've been getting a lot of farmers which is actually pretty shocking farmers are good if you see farmers you can definitely consider recruiting one or two just for the assignment we also have a new item we got a tian wonderful that can go on administrators or future administrators well he has one uh i guess future administrators or just maybe a sentinel for now he has a better one that's the thing i guess we'll give it to her because she actually will be in a lot of fights because of poison volley we also have two level up uh because of the level up they are becoming more and more desire for higher office we'll pick up reach on him mm, we're out of items that is a bummer more reason why i want that temple we gotta wait six turns that is definitely a bummer who has an item that they don't need Tall Tall technically has one he doesn't really need that one Guoxia has a title. We gifted him a title, so he doesn't need an item on top of a title. Guoxia should be still decently happy with us. Once we get Prime Minister, we'll put him there. Yeah, he's fine. Okay, so items done. Building's not done. Now we're going to build this. Oh, actually, I want the conversion first. Yeah, I want the conversion first and then the build. We still have a few turns of the... Assignment, so nothing's delayed here. Build this. Okay, uh, just a quick check at the end turn for turncoats. A few more options. Ooh, this one's tempting. The reason being, um, she is a sentinel, which means if she is, um, bandit character then she could have no she's a tax collector therefore not a bandit i'm looking for more poison volley characters not the case here 28.5 okay now is the time we don't have to move our army that way anymore we can just trade for it Right, we still have seven points, which he doesn't have anything that he can offer us. He is not that poor. Surprise, surprise. But he's not that generous either. Probably seven? Ah, uh, six? Okay. I'm happy with this. We'll leave him with one territory and a settlement at that. Settlements are the worst for bandits. Bandits thrive on counties. So this is a punishment for him for sure. We got our livestock farm back and our army do not need to go over here to waste time. We can go south. We can try to capture this ourselves. So we're going to actually pop out here this turn. We'll lose 2%, it's fine. We'll get here, we'll have one more turn he uh, healing. Maybe two more turns of healing in our own territory before we get over here, before Sun Tzu does. That's the race. It's actually quite wasteful to send this army that way. We can send one general. Right, so that is actually true. We should come here, take the fishing port, and then go back. Probably sell this way, grab the trade port, start attacking this way. He can be the army to wipe out Tall Chan. We don't even need to recruit a second army. That saves even more money. And then over here, we'll just raise army. Xu Chu is not available right now. We'll put Yuan Huan out there. And actually, we don't have any money left. We absolutely have no money left. We spend every single cent. Uh, how did it get to this? Hmm. Okay, since we don't have any money left, it's fine. And we made our deals, we can go to next turn. Um, I don't think I need to move any of these armies. How's our... Okay, so we have a rebellion in Huainan next turn, which means... We're just going to trust the girls, and we're going to move this army towards Huainan. So that way they can put down the rebellion and gain some experience. 
No other rebellion. Pengchuan's slow. We can speed it up. Danyang's neutral exactly. Kuai Zi as well. We can change that to make about 500 more. That's actually a lot more. Let's do that because I don't think I care that much about population growth at this point. I'd rather get more rebellions to farm and make a bit more money as we are completely bankrupt here. All right, let's continue. All right, don't mean peace out with Liu Bei. Tao Tian has died. Okay. So I think we have gone past the date when Liu Bei would confederate because we're no longer at war. Liu Bei didn't help them declare war on us. So I think we're fine. Tao Tian died of old age. His son takes over. Faction obviously becomes weaker. Tao Tian has very good background abilities. We have a few army to come back to, no items here. Usually rebels will stop spawning items after the first few, but what you can do is actually wait, let them develop a second group or go attack them, but don't wipe them and let the second general come out and he has a chance to get items as well, which we have seen earlier with the eunuch. We're gonna send Yuan Huan to go get us a rice paddy and then our main army will come back to fight the fish port over here, fishing port as our northern effort is going to just be on defensive missions until we get our main army back onto the central plains and that's where things stand as our southern conquest has completed we have yan bai hu trapped between a lumberyard which is very easy to defend and a copper mine which is also very easy to defend so he's contained entirely and we're going to turn our attention back to the central plains and the north in the future and we're finally in the same pace as a normal let's play even though we're still trying to pass on as much information as possible in the tutorial hopefully you guys are enjoying this as both forms and we'll see you guys next time bye